Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm really excited to do. It's gonna be a get ready with me on this look right here. While I answer your questions that you had about the launch of my brand by Samantha March, I did wanna say this intro is being filmed on my Sony. The actual full rest of the video is filmed off my Canon, so there's gonna be a little bit of a, of a change here. So I just wanted to throw that out there. But I asked on my Instagram, which is March Beauty Word, what questions you had about the launch of my brand by Samantha March. Uh, I launched a couple weeks ago with a 90 day planner four different notepads and also the deck of healthy habits. So I launched with those six products on my website, which is chickletplus.com. And I'm also excited because the day this video goes live, which is Sunday, August 15th, right? Uh, there is a restock happening on my website. So three of the products did sell out so that everything is going to be back up on the website. So if there's anything that you're interested in getting, you can head to chickletplus.com. All the products will be available. There is also free shipping for US customers that is still happening. So make sure to check that link. Uh, but I am also trying out some new makeup in today's video. I did a haul recently with some products from Sephora and also M Cosmetics. I do also have a new palette from Juvia's Place, a new concealer from Lancome, new lip products from ColourPop. So I'm excited to show you how I got this reverse cat eye green look right here while I answer your questions on launching a brand. So let's go ahead and get started. Hello. All right, here we are. Let's do this. Okay, so jumping into it, I have everything behind me, so this is gonna be, this could be a good time to keep turning around. Uh, but I'm just gonna start with my NARS Soft Matte Concealer, and uh, I just put down some tinted SPF from Bliss. I put some concealer on my hand here. And then I'm gonna add it to any spots that I wanna cover, but not really like blend it in. I'm just gonna kind of tap them in. Let's also jump into the questions. I feel like I haven't done a get ready with me or like a Q&A in such a long time, so this video is probably gonna be like, Arr. I also can't film with my AC on, so it's about to get real hot in here, so there's that. One of the questions, I got this question a lot, is are you gonna do any bundles for the next launch? And I definitely am planning on it. Um, everything was just kind of like a learning process for me. I'd never used to Shopify before. Um, I've never really like sold products like that. Like I've sold my books, but I did it, like I just would have like a PayPal button on my website and people would buy books that way. I do want to add my books to Shopify and then I also want to, you know, like keep doing more collections. So I am planning to do some bundles next time also and just kind of keep learning as I keep progressing and going forward and understanding and you know the the brand really is uh just me i do have my virtual assistant emily who helps me with a lot of stuff you know behind the scenes i'm looking to hire someone in vegas um that will be able to help me out and uh but other than that like it's really just me um i think sometimes it can be easy for for people to maybe compare me to say someone like sam ravendall just launched her brand like i'm nowhere near sam's level of everything that's going on it is just me and like my friends where I live helping me take product photos and product shots and like you know what I'm saying so um I'm just kind of learning everything as I go and I'm excited to keep learning with each step but I really would like to do some different bundles and packages and things like that so yes uh another question that came through was will you prepackage some stuff next launch so you don't get overwhelmed again? I actually had stuff prepackaged because I did think of that. Um, I had like boxes set up and tissue paper in them, and I had some with like just the planners in it and some with just the cards in it, and that definitely did help me. Um, but yeah, I think again, just doing everything by myself is just you know kind of a lot. This question is what's coming next? So I'm really excited for what's coming next. We're working on it now. We're working on finalizing um, everything that we want to do. I think I want to do six products again and um, there will be another theme. So this one was like the start inspired theme and then I'm not going to announce the theme yet even though if you watch any of my videos or hear me talk you might be able to guess what the next theme is. You can leave any guesses down below but I do know what the theme is going to be and I know a, a couple of the products that for sure are going to be coming out. I'm really excited. I'm hoping to launch the next collection um, before the end of the year. <laughs> that might be a little, that might be, I don't know if we can make it happen just because at a certain point, everything goes out of my hands. Everything, you know, goes to the printers and things like that. And th there's only so much I can control. And knowing how long it took to do this first one, I'm like, I don't really know if that's realistic, but I'm gonna try. 
that's my goal anyways um so i'm gonna use this from m cosmetics i have this in my last haul and this is their dream cushion spf their dream no daydream cushion spf cushion tint and i have the shade like sweet something it doesn't say it on here it's the shade sweet secret in medium tan and i'm just gonna use the little thing that it came with i saw some people say you don't love this but i want to try you know how it comes first and see how it goes this question is what was the hardest part of the process when starting by samantha march um honestly i think like just starting is kind of difficult because it's like where do you even begin and i've had a lot of people ask me you know people that have been like oh i have this idea and that idea and i really want to start something but like how do you start and i'm like i don't you really just gotta jump into it and start trying to figure things out google things um mostly google honestly like asking around didn't really help me all that much because no one had really that I knew was doing what I wanted to do. So I couldn't really like ask those types of questions. I just started Googling like, how do you make your own planner? Where do you print your own planner? How do you design your own planner? Like, I mean, I just, Google was my best friend. Um, but that was really the hardest part was just initially starting. But I will also say like everything behind the scenes, like I literally just got off the phone with my attorney about like a letter from the nevada department of taxation that was like you didn't file something with us and i'm like what like I, stuff like that is really confusing to me and also really scary to me because i've lost a business because of the irs if you um listen to my podcast or have, like heard me talk about it in past videos it was like such a scary situation and now i'm like terrified all over again because i've gotten so many letters from the Nevada Department of Taxation. I'm like, what? Like, what, what What? do you want from me? And I'm just like getting super overwhelmed. I'm on the phone with my attorney literally like every week because I have more questions. I email my accountant like every three days with questions and concerns. So, you know, it's like, I feel like sometimes it's that kind of stuff that a lot of people don't necessarily chat about. <laughs> That's really hard, but the behind the scenes, putting everything together, especially with a move in there, you know, transferring an LLC, starting a new LLC, just getting everything lined up so you're doing it by the book because i mean living in the u.s like the way our system is set up is our government is super pleased if anyone makes a mistake and all they want to do is punish you for it in the worst way possible so you know that part to me was was really challenging and something that i don't hear a lot of people talk about but if you're starting a business i highly recommend you have an accountant um, and someone who really understands your like what it is that you do um, and I also highly recommend that you have an attorney <laughs> like that's 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 pretty important um, So you can have those people that can help you when you get these letters and you don't understand what's going on um, So this is the M cosmetics. So it was pretty light coverage I kind of thought the shade maybe would be a little bit dark on me, but actually I, I feel like it I, I feel like I want to use some bronzer, but I do feel like it kind of evened everything out in a nice way It doesn't feel too heavy um, it has the SPF. I don't know. I, as of right now, I'm not really minding it. I thought it was pretty simple to use with, with this. I just, I kind of don't like putting it, uh, uh, I think maybe like a brush or a sponge. I might like a little bit more too, but it's nice that it comes with that and it fits, you know, fits right here. So I don't, so far so good. I, I did not mind that. New concealer from Lancome. This is their Tinty Dull Ultra Wear. So this one was sent to me and I grabbed out the shade 215. I've used it a couple times. I don't mind it. I like the coverage, but I feel like my under eyes are pretty dry when I use it. But I also feel like I just have kind of drier under eyes. Um, I mentioned this recently in a video that I've been using some uh, benzoyl peroxide products, which, you know, definitely does dry out the skin. So I think that maybe had something to do with it, too. So I just started using my what's it called? Derm Dermica? I just started using whatever I mentioned in my last haul, so I've backed off the benzoyl peroxide, but that also might dry me out, but I don't know. We'll just we'll just see how it goes. Uh, and then I'm just gonna use this brush again. This is from Eco Tools, and this is technically their foundation applicator, but you know, it'll work. I got quite a few uh, comments that came in saying like, no questions, just wanted to say like, I'm proud of you and way to go and things like that. And thank you to anyone who sent that in too, because it really is daunting, um, you know, going through the whole process, seeing how everything got put together again, like all the behind the scenes stuff of so everything that you have to do and everything that you have to pay for and get ready for. Um, 
I don't know if anyone like r listens closely, like you might have noticed a shift, especially in my Will I Buy It videos, talking about certain things, talking about pricing and starting a brand. And I made a lot of references to, you know, so many people are quick to like judge and assume online, but until you're actually going through it and doing it yourself, you don't really realize like what, and I'm someone who like, I knew it would be hard. Like I've, I've owned businesses, I've started businesses, I've lost businesses, I've like all kinds of things. I went to business college, like this is what I've always wanted to do is, is own my own business and my own brand. And it's hard and there, there's a lot that goes into it. So, you know, anyone that said anything sweet along those lines, I appreciate it so much because it was really hard. So thank you. Um, so one question was, what was the easiest part of launching? So that, that gave me a little chuckle because I was like, what was easy about this process? I don't know if there was anything that was, that was easy about it besides I had enthusiasm for it. Like my, my passion for this came easily. My determination and, and drive came easily. Like there was so many times another curveball would come and then another curveball would come and then, oh, by the way, I'm divorcing. Oh, by the way, I'm moving states. Oh, by the way, I need a new attorney. Oh, by the way, like, I mean, it just, like there was so many things that kept happening. And then even with the products, like the planner was so freaking impossible to get. Like it just, it was wild to me how hard it was to do this planner, uh, setting with Charlotte Tilbury. Uh, it just, it really like blew my mind. It's like, I know I'm gonna do this. I know I am. I can see it in my mind. I can visualize it. I've thought about this for such a long time and that never really went away. And I think when you have a passion for something, it, it I mean, it makes you not want to give up on it and it makes you want to keep trying and no matter the next curveball that comes through, like you're gonna keep pushing forward. So. I, I truly, when I saw this question come through, I was like, what is, what was the easiest part? I was like, I don't think anything was really easy about this, but if I had to say something, it was like, at least I had that going for me. This was, were you helped or inspired to start your brand because of the women you had interviewed on your podcast? I thought that was a really good question because I have interviewed quite a few business owners and brand owners on my podcast. So I knew, I, I started working on this whole project back in 2019. Um, but you know, it definitely was helpful to talk to other female entrepreneurs, even though no one was doing the same thing that I wanted to do. I interviewed a lot of people in the beauty space. Uh, so our, our processes were kind of different, but I think it's always interesting and it's always such a way to be inspired to talk to people who are doing something that aligns with whatever it is that you want to do. So talking to someone like Lisa J makeup about BK beauty and me being like, how did you even first start? And you know, and she said, you know, she said the same thing that I said, I just started looking around. I just started Googling and looking for different places that made brushes. And, and you know, that's the whole thing. It's like, you just, you just gotta get started. Them definitely helped, you know, keep me motivated, keep me inspired, you know, gave me some new ideas of new places to look and things like that. Um, and it's why I, I, I loved interviewing people on the podcast and I'm really excited for the podcast to come back soon and to have some really different interviews on there this, uh, this season also, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, I'm going to use my Danessa Myricks uh, contour balm. I have the shade, uh, light two, and I'm just going to use a damp sponge to apply this. And I do like to put down my cream products before I powder my face. The question is how to finance. Okay then, um, so I didn't have like, I don't have any investors, I don't have a business partner. Um, I really did not wanna take out loans. So I have just been saving and saving and saving for a couple years now in order to be able to start this business and also hire not just, um, you know, people to actually like help produce the, the products, but even something like the attorney fees your accountant fees, um, just all those like little business fees that you have to pay on the back end, fees to start your LLC, to file your paperwork, all that stuff, um, you know, takes money. And then um, obviously for inventory, that was one of my biggest costs was buying everything ahead of time. Uh, you know, I don't have like a warehouse or like I, like anything like that. Like I needed to purchase all of the, the products and to be able to have them here so I could ship them. Even something like shipping boxes, so expensive. Like shipping boxes are crazy pricey. I just 
saved as much as I possibly could and then I basically put up my entire savings account to make it happen and just crossed my fingers and hoped for the best and uh yeah that that's that's what i did um there's a lot of different ways to go about financing a business i would suggest making a business plan i made a business plan for myself again that is what i went to school for i've made like a thousand business plans in my life for all kinds of things we had to make some like weird business plans in college let me tell you um but make a business plan see everything out on paper do all your financials have an accountant that you can ask like you can ask those kind of questions to uh is you know obviously going to be really helpful also uh but it's going to be different for everybody like of course i wish that i had a business partner and of course i wish that there was like investors interested in the brand and all of all of those things but i'm also really proud that i launched this all on my own and like every single part of this business is me and has my fingerprint on it and i'm super proud of that i hope that it grows i know that it will grow um i know that it will grow and i know that i'll be able to have opportunities to expand in the future which is really really exciting to me uh, but at this moment i'm just kind of living in the present and being grateful for what i have right now and knowing that i was able to to accomplish it myself so um, you know, for me, I had a certain financial goal in mind that I wanted to hit in that account that I was saving for. Um, you know, the account was titled by Smith March. <laughs> um, I, I had that in there and I said, once I get to this, this number, then I'm going to feel, feel confident to be able to move forward with it. And that's kind of how I went about it. But, you know, planning, doing all of the work ahead of time. Um, so you know, kind of exactly what you're getting yourself into. I, I, I would definitely suggest that. Um, I said, did, did any product you created come to mind instantly? Uh, yes. So I'm going to use the M Cosmetics blush in Venetian Rose. So this is their new So Soft blush. I'm trying to decide if I want to like tap it on. Maybe we'll do a little tap. I love this like mauve color. It looked so beautiful. And then I'll blend out with my damp sponge. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have done it that way, but you know, whatever, live and learn, live and learn. Um, but did any product come to mind instantly? So when I first had the thought to uh, create this brand, like I said, it was back in 2019. So I kind of mentioned this in my brand launch video, um, but I had run a, a, a kind of like a challenge here on social media, healthy habits challenge. And I ran it on like YouTube and Instagram. And it was like every day we had a new healthy habit that we would focus on and then I kind of made these um, calendars from there so people could still come by and download these calendars. And then that's kind of where the idea came from of like, why can't I do more with this? So I wanted to do something based along the calendar planner style of idea. And then that's where the planner came from. So the planner, it's so funny because that's what I started working on first. It's what took the absolute most amount of time. And it was the very last product to get done. <laughs> um, because I just didn't realize how difficult it was going to be to make a planner with a US based business, which that, you know, was something that was important to me. Again, I would say if you are trying to launch something or create something, write down things that are important to you and they'll be different for everybody. But for me, I, I really wanted to work with US based businesses. I wanted to work with kind of smaller businesses. Um, and there was, you know, a few other details like that. But I, I did not realize how difficult the planner would be. But yeah, that was the very first thing that I thought of. I think this blush is really pretty. I really like that shade. Like I said, I do, um, sometimes I don't blend out fully because I do put powder on top and then sometimes I add a little bit more on top too. So sometimes when we get to this point, things can look a little bit crazy, but I don't know, I never panic because it's, it's just makeup. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, I'm going to do my highlighter too underneath also. Again, sometimes I come back and put things on top, but if I work with cream and liquid, a lot of times I do these before I put on uh, my Dior powder. So I'm just going to put a little bit of the Milk Cosmetics. I think this one is in Stargazer. Yeah, their new sex foil. And then I just blend it out a little bit with my sponge and then apply it to my cheekbones. So yeah, the planner came right away. And then the other items, the, the notepads and then the deck of cards, that came from me wanting to purchase products like that, but I couldn't find exactly what I wanted. And then I thought, why not make them myself and launch a whole brand? Because you know, at first I was thinking small and I was like, oh, I'll just like 
launch this planner and it'll be, you know, just like a little thing and whatever, no big deal. And then as my life kept changing going into 2020 and I started to look for different ways to keep me inspired, keep me motivated, keep me positive, keep me focused on myself. Um, you know, I was like, as it felt like my whole life was kind of crumbling around me, I thought, what can I do to try to, to stay positive? And so that's why I started looking for, for these little things. And, um, yeah. And then that's how I decided to include them in for the brand. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, you always try to look at the, the silver linings and the positives in any situations. And that's definitely something that came from, from my situation as it gave me these ideas for, for more products. And then it kind of launched into a full scale brand from there. Um, I'm someone who, unfortunately, I tend to think small a lot and I'm working on that and trying to think bigger. And I mean, even the brand, I think that you could see, like I do, like I, I just, I think small and I think I've been put into this like tiny little box for such a long time. And, um, I've, I've really struggled with self-sabotage and self-limiting beliefs. Um, and I also think I, you know, kind of, I put out that energy and I received that energy back from the people who I was surrounding myself with. You know, a lot of times it was like, that idea is too big or you can never make that happen. Or, you know, those are things that I've been told in my life. And, you know, I also have to take blame in that because I feel like that's kind of like what I was exuding and that's what I was putting out there. Like, I'm scared to do this and I'm fearful to do that. And I don't know if I can do this. So then the energy I'm getting back is like, no, you, then you probably can't do that. And I'm slowly switching over that mindset to think bigger and louder and all of those things. And now that's the energy that I'm putting out. And that's the energy that I'm getting back from people. Like, you can do this. You can think bigger. Here, let's do this. And, you know, now I have people in my life that are like, let me take your photos. Let me help you with Shopify. Let me help you. And it's like, my goodness, like, how, 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 how wild is that? Um, so, yeah, it makes me excited to, to think bigger and and be bolder. Question kind of along the lines, I feel like I got kind of a lot this way of how did you figure out where to start creating a physical product? And yeah, that definitely was daunting because doing something digital definitely crossed my mind. Now I'm gonna go through with my Dior powder and a BK Beauty 105 brush. Um, doing something digital definitely crossed my mind because it would have been so much easier. I mean, as someone who produces paperbacks and Kindle books, I know how much easier it is to produce a Kindle book. Um, I know how much easier it is to distribute a, a Kindle book versus a, a paperback. Um, so I definitely had that thought in mind of like, I'll just do all, you know, digital products um, or a few digital products, but that's just not me. Um, I don't use digital planners. I don't use my digital calendars. I don't use my calendar on my phone or my reminders on my phone. I use nothing like that. I am pen to paper and that is just me. So when I'm launching something that has my name on it and I'm financing the entire thing myself and I'm doing everything myself, I need it to make sense to me and I need it to be things that I would use. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, definitely, it's definitely more challenging that way. But again, it just goes back to Googling around. Um, honestly, like Instagram is a pretty good place too of searching for um, like planner companies, planner printers, things like that. That's actually how I found who did my planner um, was via Instagram. Because a lot of times, you know, small businesses are really advertising over there too. So that can always be a good place. And, you know, I tried for the planners. I tried going to places that sold other planners like Target and such and looking at what they had for sale and seeing if they had planner information. But a lot of them are with like huge, huge companies that aren't going to pay any attention to me. Trust me, like we pinged people, we emailed people, we called people like big, big companies aren't going to give a one owner brand a second look it just i mean it just is what it is um and then a lot of other companies were ones that were you know out of china which i, I really wanted to stick with the us but then also at the time when we were putting together the planners and looking for printers um china had their their holiday where they're shut down for such a long time and that was going to delay shipping and it just was like to know that i could get something fast like my printer who does the planners is in LA, so when we finally did order them, they got to me really quickly. Um, shipping wise, you know, of course it takes time to produce, but actual shipping wise, you know, it didn't take a long time. I didn't have to worry about customs or anything like that. Um, 
so that was just like something that was important to me but yeah searching around googling instagramming um i know that we tried to uh my assistant emily was um like in other facebook groups which facebook groups can be really helpful too and asking around and i think we got a few like leads that way but i think it was mostly just google and instagram that brought us to um the the printers that we eventually ended up using the dr printer just like really evens everything out for me i try if i have products down i just tap i don't really like swirl like that like i just tap around so I'm not disturbing it too much but again sometimes at the end I'll add a little bit more on top of whatever it is that I think that I need but it's kind of like the reverse foundation except I do my foundation I'm just doing the powder last but I don't it's just a just a, a technique that I enjoy doing uh let's see let me answer one more question and then I'm gonna do my brows off camera but how do you even start to create a brand <laughs> I mean it comes down to like having your vision and like i said i think creating a business plan putting pen to paper or doing it on your computer whatever works better for you but starting to really visualize and like seeing it come together um you know choosing your name choosing like your branding colors what is it that you want to sell what is it that you want like kind of your mission of your brand to be um what products are you wanting to put out there where are you wanting to sell them i mean it just to me, it's just literally starting to take notes and like visualize it in your head. And as it's coming in your head, like be writing it down or typing it out or whatever it is that you need to do. And then you can keep going back to reference that and update and cross things out and add new things. But if you really want to start something, like I just am going to keep saying, you have to start somewhere. You have to start putting the ideas out there. You have to start, um, you know, making a list of goals or whatever it is that you need to do. I did my brows off camera and then I decided to do one eye. Sometimes that just helps me out and can help speed up the video a little bit too. But we're doing more of the like reverse cat eye trend. And I mentioned that I wanted to do it with a green shadow. You can do it with any color. I've done it with black, brown. And I'm going to do it with green. I'm going to use a combination of two palettes. I'm going to use the color pop waffle cone and then also the new juvia's place uh the rebel army palette because i really love this green in here but there's no like lighter tones like in the color pop where i'm going to use this matte brown but i didn't want to use more of like a teal green like i really want like the deep green because i love that color so i'm just going to use a combination of both so first up what i do i and i also have a demo on my instagram where i did it with brown shadow um which i really did like like i said you can do it with anyone i saw angie did it with red and it looked so good so i just take a, a light shade this is a light brown shade i'm using some brushes from the new sigma and beauty bird collection this one is the dream blending and then i just very lightly put this into my crease and blend it along with the reverse cat i usually like your 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 lid is what has the most drama but with this it's the lower lash line that has the more drama so we keep the lid pretty um pretty simple so i am just going to blend that back and forth another question is honestly how do you do it all what keeps you motivated and helps everything get done daily that's definitely a question that i get asked a lot too um and I, sometimes i feel like my answer is like such a cliche but I also feel like it's true and I love what I do and the thing is is like I've tried a lot of different things in life okay like I've held a lot of different jobs I've thought I've wanted to be a lot of different things I've tried a lot of different things and nothing panned out because I didn't have a passion for it I didn't have a drive for it I didn't really care about it so even though there was all these things that I went to school for and I thought that I wanted to do and I pursued doing I never stuck with anything because I just I didn't have a drive for it. So once you figure out, and it can take a long time, you know, but once you figure out what it is that gives you that, that boost, that motivation, the thing that you can do all day, every day without, you know, staring at the clock all day, wondering when you can be done. I mean, I wake, like, I feel so lucky when I say this, but I wake up every single day excited to go to work, excited to know what opportunities lie ahead, excited to see what I'm going to create that day. And I've felt that way, you know, since I started on this career path. 
writing books, blogging, then going over into more of the social media space. It is something that I've always loved and it's why I kept at it for such a long time. It's why I kept at it when I wasn't getting paid. It's why I kept at it when I had no idea what I was doing or what HTML coding was. It was why I kept doing it when people said, that's weird that you post pictures of yourself on the internet. Why are you doing that? It's why I keep doing it. It's because I love it so much. It doesn't feel like a job to me. So it's easy for me to keep going I don't know if I want to say easy, but it's, it comes naturally to, for me to keep going um, because even through the hard times, I, I believe in myself enough that I know like, okay, we'll get through this. It's just a hurdle right now. It's a learning experience. You know, we'll be able to grow from here. Um, but you know, to-do lists are my best friends. Um, I always have a to-do list. Uh, I love having my schedule planned out for the week. I mean, again, like going back to the notepads that, you, that, that are for sale, um, those types of things really do help me out so much. I'm very visual, I'm very pen to paper. Um, that kind of stuff really does help me out. And I also try to limit other distractions. I will say when I lived in Iowa and I pretty much never left my house, I feel like I got so much more done and I was more organized and all these different things. Um, and when people would ask, you know, my friends would ask me like, how do you do it all? I'm like, well, I don't have a social life. Like, I mean, literally all I do is work. And truly all I did was work. And you know, moving to Vegas and, and making new friends and being able to go out and do things, um, you know, that's definitely changed my work routine and I just had to, to change with it. I had to say, okay, um, instead of, you know, doing seven days a week nonstop, these are my main focus days and these are my main goals. These are my main priorities that I need to get done this week. I need to do those before I, you know, go out and do fun things or go to the pool or, you know, and, um, you know, living here, uh, people will text me to be like, Hey, we're all going to go to the pool at one o'clock. And I'm like, you know what? I can't be there at one o'clock. I can be there at four o'clock though. Um, but I got to get work done first. And, you know, I have to be able to prioritize what needs to get done when it needs to get done before I, you know, go out and enjoy my social life. But I've definitely found, it took me a little bit, but I found, um, a balance here in Vegas also. Um, so those are just those are just a few of of the ways uh my morning routine is really important to me i've talked about my morning routine for such a long time um staying off social media in the morning having my routine where i write down my goals for the day i look at my schedule for the day um, i write down my affirmations i speak them aloud I, I just take time for me in the morning i usually work out in the mornings um and just kind of having that routine uh, really does help me out. So those are just those are those are just a few things. Just a few things. <laughs> Next up, I'm taking a green eyeliner. This is from the ColourPop and Raw Beauty Christie uh, collection. So I, I don't think it's available anymore. But I like to take the liner that uh, color of the liner that I'm using for my look, and then I'm gonna put that into my waterline, and then I do also tight line, and then I'm gonna run the eyeliner on the lower lash line. Honestly, I think the reverse cat eye is a pretty simple technique. Um, and you can kind of be sloppy with it, which is, which I think is fun. And then I take the liner and I'm just gonna extend it out a little bit, creating a wing. And then I add a little bit on the outer corner also. I wasn't going to at first, but then I realized if I wanna do lashes with this look, it's better to have a little bit here, especially because a lot of times the lashes I just do in the corner. So I just need like a little bit of liner happening there. And then that is it for the liner. And then I'm gonna come into the green shadow in the Juvia's Place palette. And I'm using one of the double-ended brushes from that Sigma Club. This is technically for brows, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna grab that really beautiful green. And then I'm just gonna go right over that liner and then really start to smoke it out, like kind of drag the liner a little, or the shadow a little bit down. And I'm just going over all the places with the liner so I can start to really make that wing shape here. I like this brush because I feel like you can get pretty sharp. And then also going over the upper lash line too. Ooh, I'm loving this brush for this. And then this part, I'm not good at. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm, I'm not, I don't know how people do this part and I don't know how it doesn't irritate them. I already watery eyes and in Vegas, I get dry eyes so bad, which then causes watery eyes, which is kind of funny, but I, like I'm constantly using eye drops. 
So this part I don't, I love it on everybody else except for me. I don't, let me know if you have tips for this one because I've never really seen people talk about this, but people um, will extend the liner from like their tear duct area, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, so I'm just gonna use the shadow. And just kind of start to tap it there, connect here. I just feel like I don't do it. I, I, I just, I don't know what I'm doing. That's just what I'll say. So we're just going to go a little bit like that. And honestly, it's probably going to be wiped off here shortly because my watery eyes is going to, is going to take it away. So that's what I do with the green. And then I'm going to come back in with the brown shadow and I'm going to use a smaller brush. This one is the dream fluffy pencil. So just kind of like a larger pencil brush coming back into that brown from the ColourPop, And then I'm just going to smoke everything out. So I'm going to start this a little bit lower than that green and just smoke it back and forth a little bit on the upper lash line. I'm going to pretty much leave the wing alone though. Cause I like the, the sharp wing effect. But everything else just smoke it out just a little bit i really didn't get much fallout but i'm just going to take my brush that i use the setting powder with actually i think i'm just going to take a little bit of the charlotte tilbury powder just to just be on the safe side i'm just going to kind of touch up with that powder down here but that is it i i i feel like it's a pretty simple technique um, and I really like it. I feel like it's drama without like, it doesn't take a thousand years. Um, so yeah, that is how, at least how I do the reverse cow. I followed, you know, different tutorials and that was how I saw it being done, but I really wanted to do it with the greens and I really like how it came out. Another question is how long were you working on your brand before it actually launched? So the initial idea to actually start something came in October, 2019. Um, and then in January 2020, I really started to work on it and started designing um, because I wanted to launch in like spring of 2020, but COVID happened in March of 2020 and I wasn't sure what to do. I wasn't sure do I come out with products during this time? I mean, because we had no idea what was going on, how long it was going to last. Like we just didn't know what the future looked like. And I wasn't sure if launching a brand during that time a was going to be a good idea or if people would want to buy anything or if it just would like come across like the wrong way and i remember listening to a podcast once and i remember being in the shower listening to this podcast and i heard the 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 woman say there's nothing wrong with putting things out there that you are really passionate about, that you love, that you believe in. There's nothing wrong with putting them out there because you're just giving people the option. That's it. You're not forcing anyone to buy anything. You're not forcing anyone to support you. You're not forcing anyone to spend their money. You're simply giving an option out there. And that reinvigorated me and it re-inspired me to get started again. Um, and so it was, I believe it was back in the summer of 2020 that I was like, all right, you know what? I am going to do this. Let's really hunker down and, and make it happen. And then that's when the other idea spurred for the other products. And then it ended up turning into a whole brand. But that's something that I think about. And it's something that I keep in mind. And you know, when people, and I'm someone who too, I've done it too. Like I'm, I'm, I'm throwing, I'm going to throw myself under the bus too, of being like, oh, there's, you know, there's so many brands and so many products. And so, and, but now you'll hear me say like, well, there's options for everybody. Or, you know, if you really love that, now you have this option out here. And it really kind of helped me shift my, my mindset that way too. Um, because I was like, yeah, there is nothing wrong with, putting something out there that you believe in. And the, all these products, you know, they all came from something that I believe in, I wanted, um, products that helped me during a hard time. And that's what's important to me. I'm not just putting products out there just to put products out there. I'm not, you know, you know do you, I, I, I bet you guys don't know this. And so many influencers might be able to, to speak on this also, because I know in my career as a beauty blogger, the number of times I have been approached by people, by companies, by business to basically just slap my name on something. 
so many times um, people being like you could start a beauty brand and you could launch all these lipsticks and this lab they put all the lipsticks together and do all the packaging and then you just decide on like the box and you put your name on it and it's good to go no no I get those all of the time and it's so funny moving to Vegas and telling people what I do the number of people here in Vegas that have been like why don't you just do it this way it's so fast and it's so easy and you'll make a ton of money no no, that's not what I want. I want to be involved in every aspect of my business. I want to be designed, be a part of all of the, the designing, which is something I never thought that I would do. Um, I've never really had that creative, artistic, um, visual type of mind. This brand and working on all of the products has completely changed that for me. I had so much fun doing the designing. And that is something I never thought that I would say. But because I really wanted this to be all me and to put my stamp on it and to know that, again, my fingerprint was on every single one of these products, I had to learn how to do that. I had to figure it out and it took me forever and I cried and I cried. <laughs> oh my gosh, did I cry? Because I couldn't figure it out for the longest time and I kept going and I kept learning. And now I know that you know if something happens, I can fix it, I can do it. Um, and that really means a lot to me. So I don't just wanna be putting my, my name on something and having a company put it all together for me and I just, approved. like that just wasn't what I wanted. Um, and so I think hearing that and knowing this is something that I've wanted to do for something for, for so long. This is something that I actually have my degree in is business and I'm going to utilize it and utilize all those business plans I made back in the day. I mean, it, it, it just really made me so excited. So if you're thinking about starting something, you're like, Oh, you know, so many people do that. Or is that really necessary? Or is now a good time? There's nothing wrong with putting the option out there. If it's something you truly believe in, it's something you're going to work hard at. It's something that you feel, you know, maybe is missing. Um, or again, just going back to if it's something you believe in, there's nothing wrong with giving people the option. You're not forcing anyone to do anything. All right, so I did add on lashes. I did the Balm Big Fan Lashes. I mentioned these in my July ranking, all the, the makeup that I tried in July. And I cut them into more of like corner style lashes. So I just popped those on. And then I added some Maybelline at Sky High to my bottom lashes. And that is it for the eyes. So I hope you enjoyed seeing the reverse cat eye trend on me. Uh, let's see, another question is, how are you feeling now that you've had a successful launch of your brand? You know, it took me a little bit to like process everything because you know, once it launched, then I went full into packing and shipping orders. That was a whole thing. One of my printers, printers broke, so that was like a whole, I was like running back and forth from the office here at the complex to use the printer to print out the packing labels and like that was just like a disaster. Um, so I was so busy the first, like I think it took me nine days to get completely caught up on all the orders that came in those first couple of days. And so, I mean, I was just like nonstop. That's, that's what I, that's what I was focusing on. Um, and I felt like I really didn't have time to process what had happened and just how well it was received. Um, so after it kind of died down, I, I really went into my gratitude journal and I wrote down like all the different ways that I was feeling and it just, it was really incredible. And then this past weekend, my friends here at the complex, they threw me a surprise brunch. My, my friend Naya, you've probably heard me talk about her a lot and I share a lot of photos with her, but she said, um, do you want to have brunch? Just the two of us on Saturday, the, the week prior. And I was like, oh my gosh, yes. And I was like, so excited. I was like, we're having this baddie brunch. Like I'm so pumped. And then we walk in and I see one of the girls from the complex right away and I smile, like I was like, oh my gosh, like no way. And then everyone yells surprise and my face just goes. And I literally, like I turned to Nia and I said, what is the surprise? And she's like, we're all here to celebrate you and celebrate your launch. And I just was like, what? Like I just, I couldn't believe it. Like I couldn't, I, that's, I, I don't think I've ever had a surprise party before and I really didn't know how to handle it and I was crying and it just was like so crazy. So I've since launching, I've just had so many amazing moments. Um, I, I talked about this in my July ranking video as well, but all of the messages and emails that have come through from people who have been inspired by what I've done and doing it through a very hard time in life it's just all been so meaningful to me and I'm gonna try really hard not to cry because I just put these lashes on. But it's all been so meaningful to me and I'm so grateful that I've been able to form these relationships and these connections 
and it's just it's just been such a wonderful experience um i feel really proud of myself because i know how hard it was i know how much work i had to put into it and then to see this beautiful response it just I don't know what else to say besides like I'm so full of gratitude that's like just what I keep saying like I'm so full of gratitude I write down what I'm grateful for every single night and I'm just I'm so thankful that I never gave up and that I never said you know what this is good enough this life is good enough and I always kept going so no matter what it is that you want to do whether it's something like starting a business or just starting something new or starting over somewhere, you just never know what's gonna happen. You never know where your path will lead you and the people that you will meet along the way and the things that will happen because of the decisions that you make. So yeah, basically how do I feel? It feels really amazing. I feel a lot of love. Which is a great feeling. And I just feel very grateful. <laughs> Alright, I'm just going to finish off with the lips. So I did purchase the Kitten Lip Liner from M Cosmetics. So I'm first just going to line my lips here. Alright, so that lip liner felt nice. So it's a little bit more of like a pinky nude color. So nice and creamy. Felt like it applied well. These new ones from ColourPop. These are their glossy lip stain so i've been curious to try them out i think the shade that i'm gonna go with is in sugar snap which looks like this one is just a nude looks like a maybe like a darker nude i don't know i haven't I haven't tried these yet so i'm a little bit nervous let me just swatch and see okay so they look like maybe they're gonna be a little bit sheer Okay, so it's supposed to be a lip stain, so I'm kind of curious of like how long it's going to last on my lips. It's not like super opaque, uh, but I like it. I like the shade. What was this one? Sugar Snap. I like the shade so far. Okay, it goes on pretty wet, so I'm like curious to see like how it's going to dry down and if it's going to feel really drying or if it's just going to kind of stain the lips and that's it and then not feel like anything. I, of course, will come back to review everything that I'm trying out like I do every month. I'm going to add just a little bit more bronzer and blush. I'm actually first going to go into my cream blush. And I'm just going to add a little bit to my sponge and then tap it over. So again, sometimes I do this at the end. If Once I have my powder down and everything else down, if I'm like, you know what? I feel like I just need a little bit more. Then I'm just going to go ahead and add away. I already took out my hair clips, so good, good. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the M Cosmetics Venetian Rose back. I like to see too, usually with cream products, if if, if they do add on top of powder, okay. Because sometimes, like some do and some don't. This one appears to be going on pretty smoothly though. Hmm. Actually, that went on really nicely. Okay. Then I'm just going to use my Marc Jacobs bronzer and a Sigma Dream Bronze. Hey, look at that. Actually, I pulled out the bronzer brush. And then I'm just going to add just a little bit of bronzer on top. Forehead doesn't really need much, but just a little bit to the tops of my cheekbones here. I feel like the Dream Cushion has been holding up really well. I'm super curious to keep trying out this product. Ooh. Okay, so I just wanted to add a little, little bit of color back in. <laughs> I love this. Do you get regular sleep? LOL. <laughs> I mean, I try. I, I, I do try. Um, usually I'm in bed around like 9, 10 o'clock, 11 is pretty much the latest I will let myself go. Um, I think it's kind of funny. I remember I did, um, there was like a ask me any questions trend going around on TikTok and I did a Vegas one and one of the questions was like, do you go out and party every night? Because I've literally had people ask me and like assume that I go out every single night. That's just not possible. Like A, I'm 34, that's just not possible. Um, B, I have a dog, I have a career, I have a brand that I just launched, like uh, I have the desire to keep a functioning liver, all of those things. Most nights, you know, especially during the week, uh, nine o'clock is usually the time that I try to, try to shut down. Um, you know, there's like exceptions here and there type of thing, but again, I'm usually one of the first people to leave places and, you know, say my goodbyes, peace out, all of those things. 
Um, so I really try, especially during the week, to get regular sleep. So I would say I sleep around like 9, 10 o'clock, and then I'm usually up between 6 and 7. So I do try to get regular sleep. How long did it take for you to decide on your name? Um, really not long at all. By Samantha March has been my Twitter handle for, since 2015 somewhere around in there whenever I first started Twitter under Chicklet Plus which is the name of my blog and then I decided to create a separate account for just my author stuff because the blog like at one point Chicklet Plus was like a great like when blogs were such a big thing Chicklet Plus was a huge thing I had multiple reviewers that reviewed books and other products and wrote articles for the blog and they would tweet things so that was just focused on Chicklet Plus and then when I started putting out more books and then other content, I decided to have a, a Twitter account just for that. And so that's when I created by Samantha March and kind of just went from there. I probably should have named my Instagram that, but my Instagram actually used to be March Books Beauty, and then I changed it to March Beauty Word. I don't know why. It probably should have been by Samantha March, but you know, I'm such a rebel. <laughs> my TikTok is also by Samantha March. Um, Okay, so I'm actually going to just go ahead and change and then we will do a final look, final thoughts, and I'll talk about some of the products that I used. Okay. I've changed so we can now do a Vegas OOTD. So today I just got these new shorts from Target. I don't know. I like the color. I thought they were cute. And then I've had this cropped tie-dye tee for a long time. So I do a family in town, so I'm meeting up with my mom and my aunt um, for dinner. So yeah, and then this is the final makeup look. So to run through the products, I really did like the cushion. I feel like there's sometimes when I do my complexion and I'm like, this is really working for me. I don't totally feel that way, but I don't like hate it. I think it's just the coverage is so light on it that I might need just a little bit more oomph. I don't know, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Like I like it, but I'm not like overly, overly wowed by it, but it would be good if I just wanted something to like go to the pool or something like that, kind of even things out a little bit, give a little bit of a tint and still have that SPF. Kind of what I'm thinking there. Uh, for the Lancome concealer, like I said, I've been trying that one out. I do think that I just have kind of drier under eyes right now, but actually I don't think they look too bad today. So, you know, I'll keep, I'll keep testing out the concealer. The Danessa Myers Contour Balm, I've really been enjoying that. I've been using it for quite some time and I really do like it. I, I'm really enjoying this blush. I even like that it went on top of the powder really smoothly. The Melt Cosmetics Highlight, I mean, I just did it underneath. You can see a little bit poking out here. Uh, when I talked about this in my haul, I said I feel like I just have to use a lot of it and you saw like I used one full pump for each side of my face and I just kind of feel like that's that's a lot. Um, so that's really the only thing that's kind of holding me back from like loving it. I don't I don't mind it, but I just I wish I didn't have to use so much and that it was a little bit more on the blinding side. I really do like the palettes that I use. You know, I only use one shade from Dubious Place, but I have really been enjoying Waffle Cone from ColourPop. I enjoyed the Balm Lashes. And then for the lip products, the M Cosmetics Lip Liner was really smooth, which was great. And I'm really curious to see how this goes throughout the day, the ColourPop uh, lip stain. But of course, like I said, I come back to review everything after I've been trying them out. And then I just wanted to end it on one final question, and that is... Uh, what's the biggest thing you learned with this project and starting your own business? And I wanted to end it on this because this is something that I really took away from this entire process um, and that I thought was important. And it's that you never know until you try something. And what I mean is that I've definitely had those kind of like judgmental thoughts against other people, brands, whatever it may be. You don't know until you're actually doing something. So, you know, I've seen all kinds of comments since I'm starting, like I'm just another influencer starting a brand. Um, you know, there's so many plan, like you can go buy a planner from Target, you know, all those things. Um, I'm pricing things too high because I'm just concerned about making money. You have no idea. You have no idea until you're actually doing it. And that is something that I remind myself of every day. When I am going to have a thought against someone else, I have to stop and say, I don't know. I'm not in that position. I'm not the one doing that. And I learned a lot throughout this process, a lot of the behind the scenes, even stuff regarding like shipping and shipping boxes. I had no idea that I would only be able to use one shipping box with Shopify. Like I didn't, 
that is not something that came across my mind um, and then even with the pricing like going over it with my accountant going over how much everything costs to produce which is very expensive going over how much um, if I do free shipping which everyone told me literally everyone told me not to do free shipping and I really wanted to how you know how much money I spent in shipping costs because minimum it's eight dollars for me to ship a package so it's a lot um, so when people want to like complain about prices it's like you don't know you don't know um, and again that's one thing that I really try to remind myself of too is that you just don't know and that goes beyond business you don't know what people are struggling with you don't know what people are you know having behind the scenes you don't know what people are trying to work through uh, with themselves and there's so much judgment in this world and there's so much hate and there's so much people looking for negativity and this whole process really helped me change my mindset all the way back in 2019 of trying to focus on the positives every day to really flip that mindset and I've been so grateful for it. Everything has kind of culminated to the launch of this brand and releasing this brand and all these little things that I've talked about throughout the past two years. It's, it's all it's been because of what I've been trying to do and undertake and the changes I've made for myself personally and professionally and I'm just that's something that I a big big learning lesson um, that I took away from this you know I also learned what hard work can do what determination can do what not giving up can do and all of that I'm extremely grateful with uh, I've learned so many life lessons throughout these past two years of trying to launch this brand and I'm incredibly proud. I'm so excited to see where by Samantha March goes and I'm so grateful to all of you for your support and sharing or purchasing any of the products or just talking about it. Um, I, I'm so incredibly grateful. I want to keep doing more. I want to keep putting out products that I love and I believe in and that I utilize and that I feel I could actually help make a small difference in, in someone's day, in someone's week, month, or even life. So thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for watching this this very chatty get ready with me talking about my brand by Samantha March. The restock is happening today, so check my description box for the link if there's anything that you are interested in. I'll also link all of the products. I'd love to know what you think of this look that I created, but thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Uh, it is so appreciated. Much love to you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I hope you also consider subscribing before you go. And I'll see you in my next video because I'm just going to start to randomly cry. <laughs> Goodbye.